This is my Regency 250B, also known as the XL2000, which was not intended to be used on the 2 meter ham radio band, but has been modified by the previous owner to work on that band. This power supply came with the radio. To program this radio, you first need to remove the five screws from the bottom cover. I like to leave the bottom cover in place and then flip the radio over and remove the top cover by lifting and gently pushing towards the back. When removing the top cover, you need to be careful because the speaker wires are connected and they're, they're not very long. If you need to remove this front bezel, and I recommend you do not if you can avoid it, then be careful of the ribbon connected to the keypad. Bumping it could easily ruin it as it's pretty fragile and it's only loosely pushed into the sockets. You can go to my website for more information and procedure on programming the radio, but I wanted to highlight the location of the J401 pins, which have to be bridged when you're programming the channels. I used a flathead screwdriver between the pins, which worked fine. Uh, the tips of some needle-nose pliers also worked. As you can see, my pins have been bent quite a bit, and they were actually loose in the board. I ended up having to flip it over and re-solder those pins from the back before I was even able to program it. You can remove the bottom cover by just lifting the chassis out once you have those five screws removed. And after the cover is off, uh, there's a second chassis cover which also needs to be removed using a 316 socket or a wrench or some pliers would be fine. I'm pointing to the J401 pins here, but you can also see the capacitor soldered in place to convert the radio to the ham band. You can find a list of these capacitors on my website as well as more information. After programming a couple channels into the radio, I decided I didn't like messing around with the pins, so I picked up this switch at Radio Shack for 2 or $3 and installed it into the back of the chassis. Uh, this is a momentary button, so when I want to program the channel, I only need to hold down the button, which is way easier than opening the case and jumpering the pins. The wires I used are just 24 gauge. It's the stuff that comes out of your regular Cat5 cable. To help illustrate the actual programming process, I created this document which can be downloaded at my site as both an Excel file and in PDF format. For me, it's just easier to know exactly what combination of numbers I'm going to need to key into the radio, so I'm not trying to figure it out on the fly. I'll use the same page to program the first channel, and the first step will be to jumper the pins while the radio is still off. Since I've installed this programming button on the back, uh, I can show you this process with the case assembled. Once the pins have been jumpered, go ahead and turn on the radio and start the first program. The first thing you'll do is key Pro Prior and 10, and then if the numbers turn off, you know that you're in programming mode. If the numbers did not turn off, uh, turn off then you don't have the pins properly uh, bridged. From there, just key in the first channel, and after the last step, uh, key Enter, and then assign it a number, 1 in this case, and the LED indicators will blink, letting you know that it worked. You can verify the channel uh, was programmed correctly by remaining in programming mode and then just keying manual and then the assigned channel, one again in this case, and watch the numbers get read back to you. Once you're done programming, turn off the radio and then you can unbridge the programming pins. That pretty much sums up uh, programming the Regency, and if you have any questions or comments, go ahead and post below. Don't forget to visit my website at randomrustuff.com for more information and PDF copies of the service manual, as well as the other files mentioned in this video.